Voted as best internet radio show in Tampa Bay, you're tuned in to Happy Hour. This segment is being brought to you by Maltronic.com. At checkout, use keyword Hoppy for 20% off. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Call security! Ryan in Chicago. You're on Rover's Morning Glory. Good morning, Ryan. I like this guy already. I like this guy. This guy, uh, wow. All right. Now, do people tell you that you are a goofball or a... We met young Ryan Hop or Hoppy. Ryan. Okay, and your name? Ryan Hoppy. Okay, Ryan Hoppy. Where do you live? Holland tonight. Ah, so you're from the rich north suburbs. What's going on, Ryan Hoppy? This is Tony Romo. Your buddy, Ryan Hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows who Ryan Hoppy is. You never have to worry about offending Ryan Hoppy. Isn't he like seven foot tall? He's yeah. seven foot tall. He's And he's only, a, he's a kid. He's right. a kid. He's been trying to find his place in radio. Yeah. He's a good kid. He's just, I don't know. He spread himself pretty thin. He's, uh, he's got good mentors. And he's motivated. Happy Hour is on now. Happy Hour is on now. Yo, what's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. Recording live from the Happy Hour complex, which is just my small apartment that I pay 500 bucks a month for, and beautiful St. Petersburg in the weird part of this neighborhood where I hear gunshots at night. And a lot of madness. Sitting in on the show is my good friend and basically new panel member of Happy Hour from the Lazy Ass Podcast. AJ is here. What up, dude? What up? I'm, I'm here and, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. For I'm getting really good reviews about you. People are complimenting you, saying you have talent. Joe O from Bone TV said you're like Sam Kinison. How is that comparison for your ego? Um, you know, I, I never thought Sam Kinison was that funny. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, he's a successful comedian. He was a successful comedian. So thank you, Jay. At least you're not being compared to some open micer. AJ, take the compliment. Yeah, I'll take the compliment. Thank you, Joe. That, that was that Joey Flash. I wish thank someone you. would tell me I have the talent of a legendary comic. You just don't get good humor. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like a more Chris Farley type. I, I don't know. I, don't I did know. say that to him. I was like, you remind me more of Chris Farley. Or John, or, uh, John Belushi. Yeah. Don't say Jim. <laughs> <laughs> not Nobody. Jim Belushi. <laughs> no, Hell no, not Jim Belushi. All he's good for is making bank on an awful sitcom. Dude, I never got why that show was on for so long. It basically What show is, was it? What according was it? to Jim. What? You've I, never heard of I've it? I've never heard of that. Dude, never it was, you've that. never heard of Jim Belushi's sitcom, According to Jim. No, when was that out? Probably 2004 to 2011-ish. Yeah, I, back then I was listen, I was watching Nickelodeon all the time. I, I didn't give a shit about See, that. See, I grew up middle class, but poor. Where we were middle class. We had food every night in the dinner table. We were doing well in life, but... The difference is we couldn't afford cable, so I wasn't able to watch Nickelodeon. Really? So I had to watch the shows on ABC that weren't so good. That's true. Well, yeah, that's actually weird because I thought uh, for like most of my life I thought uh, Nickelodeon was like part of the regular. Nickelodeon is part of like regular, uh, basic, basically basic cable. But no, apparently it's. Uh, I think it's like a like Viacom section. I don't know. Here's how great of people. Here's how religious and awesome my parents I nev- were. I never watched HBO though. Me neither. That's expen- That's too expensive. Two points. Here's how awesome my parents were. Yeah. They took cable from the neighbors via a wire from like maybe 1998 to 2001, but then they quit doing it because they felt like they were doing a bad deed. That's how I mean, religious my parents were. They were like, I'm making God be, mad. I couldn't be that religious if they were, if, if they were doing they it felt for bad. a few years. Second point, dude. I never had HBO either. I don't think... Any millennial has HBO now either, unless like you're making a lot of money as like an IT uh, consultant and you're making great money or whatever kids our age do to make great money because we're not doing it right now. So my point is we basically grow up in a generation where we go to putlocker.com or Popcorn Time or Torrens, and that's how we watch HBO. I've never ever in my life, unless I'm at my uncle's house, actually sat down and I was actually watching On Demand Boardwalk Empire. I've never been like, you know what? I have HBO. I'm actually going to sit here and watch it. 
Um, I mean, I don't know any kid that would sit down and watch Boardwalk Empire. It's a, uh, the best show ever. It's dude. a great show, but like, I don't know. I was a kid. Like, I, when I was a kid, I wasn't watching The Sopranos or, or any of that stuff. Okay, like, when parents... I said kid, I meant like eleventh grade, tenth grade. I'm not talking about fourth grade. Right. Well, you are um, four years younger than me, so you were in seventh grade at that point. I, I mean, honestly, the I, I feel like what a lot, like a lot of college students watch HBO. I don't know, oh, like because. Uh, if they were to live on campus, it would come free with uh, the room and board. So I remember I had HBO Go for a while, and that was fun. I caught up on Game of Thrones and all that fun stuff. That's not HBO. That's HBO Go. I'm talking about sitting down going, okay, 10 p.m. Sunday, yeah. got to watch Game of Thrones. Well, no one's doing that then because everyone has Hulu and everyone has mm-hmm. Netflix and stuff like that. So I You're mean, proving my point. Yeah. Congrats! You want a you want a you want a you want a cookie? All right. It was a, I didn't know that was some great argument that we were doing. AJ, yes. How do you feel you're doing in life? Do you think you're doing well? Um, I'm doing all right for a 20 year old. I mean, I want more, but at the same time, like I got to know that I'm still young and I still have a lot of room for growth. But as of right now, as of right now, I know I'm good, but I'm not satisfied. I'm 24, going on 25, so I have a little more pressure. But a lot of times, even if I'm doing the best show ever, like right now I feel anxious. Even if I'm doing the best thing ever, yeah. I always say in my mind, oh, Hoppy, you can do better. Or on the worst day, Hoppy, you suck. I always feel anxious. And you've had to hear those vents, those rants, while we're driving to an event or back from an event, just overthinking everything. And at times I go, you know what? Why am I doing it? I must be the only person that overthinks about life. There's a famous rich TV host that battles it as well. Who is it, AJ? Uh, Well, you just handed me the paper. Carson (laughs) Daly apparently (laughs) battled with anxiety attacks when he was in MTV. You like how I did this show prep? Yeah, you know, you just throw it at you. It's not like there's two cameras right in front of us (laughs) to make it it like a seamless Oh, yeah, because we have... A lifetime amount of viewers. We're killing it in life. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, so Carson Daly battled with anxiety attacks while at MTV. Now, what did did he did he host TRL or he was? He, he, I believe he... so. And I think he hosts that show now. I haven't watched it in ten years. The thing after, um, I think it's after Jimmy Kimmel. No, that's how long it's been since I've watched it. He has that last call with Carson Daly. It's on at like one in the morning. And on Friday nights, I would be up until like 1230 watching Jimmy Kimmel when he was actually funny. And he actually wasn't just crying about Trump every night. And, dude, Jimmy Kimmel back in the day was phenomenal. Oh, I, I He's know. just terrible now. It's really unfortunate. Well, he was he was my favorite uh, TV show. And then host. Trump got elected and now he's just a pussy. I'm like, dude, he go was, back to what you did with Adam Carolla. It was either him or Conan O'Brien who were my favorite late night And now they're hosts. both crybabies. It's uh, annoying. Well, Jimmy Kimmel more so than Conan. But, like, I remember Jimmy Kimmel was pretty good. Until, Conan, like, though, gets too liberal for me. Like, we all know they're liberal. Can you have new material? It wasn't until Jimmy Kimmel started... Uh, I think it was like two years ago. I think that's when everyone got turned off by Jimmy Kimmel, but he had a good run. Conan, uh, he doesn't have as big of an audience as Jimmy, but he's still, I mean, okay, who am I to critique on the audience for for a popular late night television show host? But still, I just, I like Conan. I, I still think he's funny. He's my favorite now. So I have two I don't points. think he's too political. I'll finish up the last point I had. Yeah. So this is how long it's been since I've seen Carson's show. Back when Jimmy Kimmel was on after local news, and then they would have ABC Nightline for an hour, and then it would be Jimmy Kimmel at 1130. He'd be on until about 1230, and I actually think it was on at like 2 a.m. if you're on the East Coast. Did you ever watch Carson's show, Last Call? No, never. Exactly. (laughs) Never. Because you had friends growing up on the weekend. You were always hanging out with people when you were growing up. I was at home. Well, also, you're from Florida, so it's like negative 20 degrees out in the winter. So, like, what else are you going to do on a Friday? You can go to the beach, which is why I'm glad I moved here. Um, I mean, yeah, I, get, I, I don't know. Like, they, they, I had friends, but, like, it wasn't like I was going out every night. They wouldn't let any 11-year-old just go out every night. Like I said last yeah. week, I was talking to a probable pedophile on the phone that would say, I love you to me, who I was talking to because he worked on yeah. Rover's show in Chicago when Rover was there for five months. Th- so let's just say you really... had more friends than me. Yeah, that was really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. 
I forgot that. That, that was a story that like you're that, trying to suppress I, the memory. Well, it's funny was because like I thought I've heard a lot of Ryan Hop- Hoppy stories that nothing will ever surprise me. Like whether it be shock, like whether it be like like just outright, I don't know, makes me want to cringe or just outright. That's the most cringiest. Not Basically. only cringy, but like oh, that, that's the most like sad story I've ever heard. That so, you befriended a pedophile just because <laughs> you were so lonely and you didn't have. For people that didn't listen last week, I'll give the quick take. Rover was on in Chicago, Rover's Morning Glory, in 2006 for six months. I wanted to talk to the show. This is back in 2006. So you couldn't really talk to people unless you're on MySpace. So I befriended their intern, One-Eyed Brian, who had one eye and had an eye patch on. And we would talk late night about radio and that. And my dad told me to quit talking to him because he would listen on the other landline which proves this was 11 years ago because we don't have landlines now. And he would say after each call, I love you. And I would go, "Uh, love you too. So, yeah. Why didn't (laughs) – that's just my thing, though. Like, you could have – I mean, I know you were a kid and every – how old were you? How old were you again? (sighs) Seventh grade. I don't know what – Age that is. Okay, seventh grade is an age where you should you you, they sh- you should know what a pedophile looks like and sounds like. That's not excusable. That's like like when you're thirteen, you're like, yeah, eh, he's probably a kid toucher. That's that's probably how you should have been. Do you find it sad that? <laughs> Here's how I found out. Yeah, what no, no, no. Like before you even answer, yes, I do find it sad. Go on. What were you gonna say? What the hell were you gonna say? If I say it, I have to imply that it's actually sad because it is. I had a sleepover in, like, seventh grade as well, man. This is when I learned everything. And I asked this guy who was sleeping on my ground, who was, like, my age, my old friend. He was sleeping on my ground on cushions, and I was laying in my bed, and we're doing a sleepover. And I asked him what a blowjob was. (laughs) I didn't know in seventh grade. Hey, hey, Greg. (laughs) Yes, Hoppy? Rory. Hey, Rory. (laughs) Yes, yes, Hoppy? (laughs) What's a blowjob? <laughs> I can imagine that kid just like, was that the last time he slept over there? <laughs> he did quit talking to me. The funniest thing happened with Rory. He probably thought you wanted one. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I never. The thing is, Rory, <laughs> I, I don't know what a. I never know what it, fe- what it feels like to get a blowjob, and I kind of need you to help me out. And I said to him, I remember this. I just got such a weird memory. I said to him, well, wouldn't it be kind of dirty down there? And he was like, well, I think, you know, it's pretty clean, you know? And I was like, man, I'm a weird seventh grader. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, you are. You were. That's weird. The funniest thing, though, happened with Rory. Here's how our friendship ended, me and Rory's friendship. So I would go to the library every day. This is back in 2007 when you didn't have mobile phones. So the only way that you could use the internet was actually using a internet, you know, using a keyboard, using a computer. You actually had to go and type in websites. Like kids nowadays just use their phone. But 10 years ago and then every time since then, you had to use An actual laptop, you know? So I would go to the local library because my internet was too slow at home. And that's where I met Rory. (laughs) was at the library. It was all the dorks that would be on the computers just watching, like, anime. I was watching Adult Swim, whatever. And he got mad at me for some reason. Rory. (laughs) So there's, like, the lab of all the uh, laptops, right? It's like desk one, desk two. They were all in like a square. So there's like maybe four squares. So there's like 17 uh, laptops, 16. That was awful math. So he comes over like he's a mafia guy about to do a hit. He he brought a baseball bat, plastic, and whacked it across my head while I was on the computer. Wait, so what did you do to piss him off? I don't remember. So... (laughs) The story was you went to the library and the guy, a, a stupid kid just comes in and whacks you with a plastic bag. So guy. if you're watching on Hoppy TV, I'll reenact it. What does this have to do with Carson Daly? <laughs> this guy's battled with anxiety attacks and we just went to your, your troubled childhood. I think we know why I'm anxious like him. So if you're watching on Hoppy TV, basically I'm sitting there and he just goes... But he like hits that. it very lightly. Like, I didn't even see it coming. Yeah. And then I got banned from the library for two weeks. I wasn't able to use MySpace. What a punishment. 
<laughs> Dude, this should, you should have. Did you keep a diary when you were younger? Because I would. The diary's I, all that, in my head. That would. Dude, you gotta. You gotta just write a book one day about your childhood, yeah, and yeah, that'll yeah. sell out like hotcakes. I'm telling you. You don't even need to know who I am. They're like, who's this awkward dude? <laughs> New York Times bestseller. My like, life is weird, bro. Chapter one. <laughs> in the beginning. I can't, even, I can't even say that with a straight face. And then you gotta do the you gotta do the uh the sound the what 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 was that uh what is that app that you use to like listen to ebooks? Uh I don't know. So, Go on now. Alright, whatever. You just like you gotta do the narration for your book too. Sort of like Jim Florentine did it for his book. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I just like <laughs> So I was at the library. No, you don't like, dude. Like I said, you don't have to make a, you don't have to make a recreation of your of your voice. Just do your own voice. That's totally fine. People will get the gist. <laughs> your voice sounds funny, even though. Oh wow! You yeah. made me feel bad by saying my voice sounds funny. It's so it's good. It's a memorable voice. <laughs> That's I, not a good thing. No, because you know it's it's a good thing. I think so. Donald because, Duck has a memorable voice. Yeah, and he's. <laughs> Famous as hell. He's very famous. Oh, my God. Tweet at me. At Ryan Hoppy Radio. Look who liked our picture. Our boss, Mike Olivero. If you're watching, hi, Mike. I don't think he's watching, but hey, Mike. (laughs) I don't don't think he's watching either. All right. Here's the deal. We're going to come back. Talk about DMX being sent to jail for one year. We're also going to talk about a 37-year-old teacher. That had a baby with a 14-year-old. We're going to talk about music that we loved as a teenager that doesn't, get, that doesn't get worse as we get older. Basically saying that music we liked as a teen is with us for the rest of our lives. And much, much more. All right. But no Carson Daly. <laughs> no Carson Daly. Carson, screw your anxiety attacks. We got, we got better things to talk about. <laughs> Like the local pedophile. Sometimes I wonder like about this show because it's been fun doing it with you. We bounce back and forth. I'm not comparing myself to Opie and Anthony or Ron and Fez, but I try to go with that format where it's just two guys shooting the crap talking. But at times I'm like, did we even talk about the subject? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what we could There's do. There's literally a whole article. That yeah, I'm... Been read. <laughs> He's just. He's just like, Hoppy basically is like, hey, you know this? <laughs> Out the door. <laughs> we don't need that. We play by our own rules. I'm like, you're the one who ty- who printed it out. <laughs> oh, my like, God. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like, you know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not big on talking about Carson Daly, but, <laughs> you know, you didn't have to t- print it out if you weren't going <laughs> to get on it anyway. That's what I'm trying to figure out, radio. I'm trying to figure out the happy medium. Between shooting the crap and the happy medium of actually using your prep. I think we're doing a good job. Think, yeah. We got a listen last week from Thomas Haley, who's come to our events before, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said cool that he thought our show was funnier than most things on the radio, which I was like, wow, that's the biggest compliment I've ever gotten. Mm-hmm. No, it's a huge compliment. I know. Good for you, man. Well, you were in on the show. He even said you and AJ. Good for us. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's the deal. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. We have a new segment called Tone Deaf Music Theater that we will be premiering right now. Gee, I wonder what it's about. After this, do not touch that computer mouse, that tablet. However the hell you are listening to my show. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. And now it's time for Tone Deaf Music Theater. It's five in the morning And I'm up having phone sex with you So horny And now I'm on the hotline Over here at Lutzen for you So horny Let's talk about sex, baby Let's talk about you and me Let's talk about bubbles in the tub Let's talk about making love Let's talk about you on top or me going, mm, let's have a little phone sex, baby, on the hotline. Thank 
This segment is being brought to you by Malatronic.com. At checkout, use keyword HOPPY for 20% off. That is correct. Go to Malik, M-A-L-E-K, Tronic.com. They have the best electronics around. And once you're done purchasing there, you want to save 20% off. Maybe you want their nice headphones or their nice Rocket Man Bluetooth speaker. But you're going, man, I got to pay rent at the end of the month. Man, my tax return hasn't come in. If you go to Malectronic.com, the latest friend of Hoppy Hour, and you use the promo code H-O-P-P-E, Hoppy, you can save 20% off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I gotta get started now. You should go buy a speaker for me. Okay. Done. What did you Once think I of the money. tone deaf music theater? I thought it was great. I honestly love it. Me I love it every Pretty time. Ricky. And you know what's funny? I had no idea that song, what that song was. <laughs> but if I did, that would have been the best. I'll have to play it for you afterwards. I think the problem is you've heard the song. I think it was just so bad. You're like, what song is this? Like, if you would have heard it, you'd have been like, yeah, that song from 2007. What? I think, no, is it, is it, I'm talking about sex, baby. I'm talking about you. No. Let me uh, see if I can get Do it. Quick. I think I have it in the playlist. Dude. It is, like, the best song. Like, it's weird because it's talking about phone sex, but it's, like, yeah. it's what I work out to. I have the weirdest playlist. I remember when Rover found out, when I worked on Rover Show in Cleveland, that I listened to that. They, like, made fun of me for, like, a – well, not a, a year about it because I was on there for, like, two months. But, hey, Rory, what's phone sex? <laughs> Did you have that conversation, too? Oh, my God. It's this song. On the hotline. It's a really good song, too, you know? Just takes you back to the good old days of 2007 when music was off the hook. Not really. It's probably the same as it is. Five in the morning. I oh, yes, I do. I do remember this song. How off was my singing? Very I off. Didn't even know. It wasn't even on rhythm. It was just, it was really just, it was off key. I don't even think you knew some of the words to it. I have another pretty Ricky song I will be doing during the next break. But how great is that? That was this song. That was what I just um, I think you're speechless. You're like, oh, that song. That's all- I. It's a good song, I, I think. I mean, you botched it horribly, but... That, that's was, the whole point. Yes, I know that's the whole point. It's called Tone Deaf Music Theater. Oh Dude, speaking of a music artist really botching it, did you hear what happened with DMX? No, what happened? DMX. Here, go give it to you! Get what I did there? A sentence to a year... Oh, I, thought, in... I thought that was just a hoppy freak out for a second. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tourette's. On top of whatever you have. Like no, you it's because just... X going to give it to you. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, but yeah. you said he going to give it to you. <laughs> he going to give it to you! That's all I heard. That's all I heard. <laughs> just all, like that shit. I don't know what the hell that was at the time, but then, yeah, but yeah, I, I get it. X going to give it to you. DMX is sentenced to a year in jail over tax fraud penalty and shows remorse in hearing. Of course that dumbass shows remorse. You're going to prison for a year. The short life we have, you lost a year off of it because you didn't do your taxes, idiot. I never, ever feel bad for anybody who doesn't do their taxes and goes to jail. Like, you have to be a moron. You have to be an idiot to even think to test the IRS. I think I heard that, like, there's jail, there's uh, prisons, uh, there's like that yeah, yeah, yeah. specifically for like white collar crimes, like a lot of uh, like tax evasion. Rod Blagojevich, the former governor of Illinois, is in one of the nicer ones. Yeah, so I feel like those kind of jail. Like I feel like DMX. Do you think DMX might go to those kind of? What, that well, kind of let's jail? see what the article from the Daily Mail says. He's going to Louisiana State Penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a white collar jail. DMX was sentenced to a year in jail. Mm-hmm. and three more of supervised release on Wednesday in connection with tax fraud. I feel like tax fraud is cool 
maybe in like, I don't know, the 1980s and 70s when they weren't cracking down on it. I just don't. Well, DMX doesn't seem like the smartest guy. He just does not seem very bright. So I feel like their egos, they think they can get away with it. I just don't get why you would test the government. Any of these Well, how crimes. much money was he able to get away with? It says here, the 47-year-old performer appeared before Judge Chad Rakoff, who told DMX that his offense was brazen and blatant. And that's why he gave him one year, according to the AP. Prosecutors initially said he could spend five years in jail. All right. All right so here's what happened. It doesn't really take much to, to forget about paying your taxes. Or No, I mean, I know that's not what he, he, he knew, obviously. But there's some people who do it, like, who find loopholes. Like, they would, they would create offshore accounts in uh, the Cayman Islands or somewhere uh, in, in Switzerland. And that money wouldn't be taxed, or most of it, if not all. I don't know. It doesn't really say here how much money he took during the tax evasion, but it had to be a lot for this to happen. Seven bucks. He took seven bucks. He just does not seem like the smartest guy. And his songs are just so angry. Like I feel like if he were to premiere now, it's not as edgy as it was like in 2001. Because he was just like, uh, fuck, shit, N-word, I'm angry, blah. And I feel like now, if he did it, we'd be like, who's this guy screaming? Like, his music's good, but it's good because in, like, 2001... Uh, by, by the way, fuck shit, angry, I'm N-word is also Django Unchained, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know think about it. You could, you could add a lot under the umbrella of fuck shit, I'm angry, N-word, <laughs> to a lot of things. But I'm saying that's his lyrics. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, like, he just played the angry guy. He was like, I'm going to beat you up. I'm DMX. Like, rap now is like, oh, I'm high on Molly and I'm Lil Xan. Yeah, that's, like, the, that's the thing. That's like the trap movement. That's yeah. the, a, lot of, a lot of people want to hear uh, other people take drugs, even though half of them, obviously, like, half of them don't even do it. Like, uh, Future came out and said one time, uh, I don't, he's like, honestly, I don't even, I think the most I do is smoke weed. I don't even do, I, don't, I barely even drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm just like, he's like, I just do it because a lot of white boys eat this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you see all the white boys being the druggies. You never really see anybody else. There's always the white boys from the suburbs that are like, yo, I'm going to be like DMX if it's 2001. I'm going to be like Lil Xan in 2018. So and, you know, and, and it's crazy because, like, yeah, the, like all my white friends, they yeah. take the hardest, like, like hardcore. Uh, they, I have a few friends that um, went to a music festival a while back, a while back ago. I don't really talk to them much, but they were, I'm just like, I remember like someone just brings up like in a room. He's just like, Hey man, look at this bag of fucking Molly. <laughs> and then, and then yeah, the that's guy happened. Back, like, like just, I'm like, what, what are you, what are you doing? I'm, I'm leaving. I remember I was at this house hanging out with my friend, allegedly underage drinking. I'm like 20. And it was kind of a sketchy friend, but it's that friend where you're like, eh, he buys me things. Eh, it's fun hanging out with him. But then when his friends come over, you're like, I should probably leave. And that's what happened. I'm at his house. We're playing Madden, just drinking. And in comes this kid, Arthur. Just sketchy, Polish white boy who was trying to act hood in the Chicago suburbs. How did, was he, like, Polish from, like, the, the country, or was he, like... His mom was. Okay. He wasn't. But I'm just saying it's a, like, very uh, European, listens to EDM, wears baggy pants... That type of person, and he comes. He comes in the little comrade. <laughs> like he comes in the house. And he goes, "Which one of you needs a job?" And we're all like, "Yeah, we need a job." He just comes in randomly, and he goes, "I have the perfect job for you." And we're like, "Okay." And he goes, "Okay." So the music event, I forget what it was. There's some dance show every August in Chicago where basically everyone's on ecstasy. He brings out this bag of ecstasy, yeah. and then he places it on the table. And it's the most I've ever seen, and I've just seen it once, but it was a lot. And then he <laughs> brings out a Walmart bag and has four vitamins, um, vitamin uh, cups. You know what I'm saying? Like vitamins you can buy. Oh, yeah, four yeah, yeah, containers yeah. of vitamins, like probably B12 vitamin. And he opens one up, and he breaks it open, and he goes, you guys can make money by putting ecstasy molly into this 
And then we sell it at concerts. And I remember looking at my phone and looking at the time, and I'm like, I should probably leave. And I remember I, like, ditched, and I got the fuck out of there. That's my one swear for the show. I got the fuck out of there. That was the sketchiest thing I've ever seen was the way he just broke open, and the whole point was they were going to take all the insides of the B12 vitamins and put it in ecstasy and put it back together and sell it. And I was like, eh, I'm trying to make it in radio. I should probably get the hell out of here. It was, how old were you when this happened? 20. Okay, that's not that's not a sad childhood story. <laughs> if that like... happened when you were 11, then like that's <laughs> that's when that's when you got to see someone, I think. Yeah, you're... You have a lot of stuff that's happened to you. I'm in very a much lot. denial about it, which I think makes me the average person that needs to improve. I feel like it's what hurts my relationships in general is like did I ever I hate saying it. If you if you ever had, did, I ever get touched as a kid. No, yeah. but I feel like. But you were friends with a kid touch <laughs> for a little bit. Like, here's the thing, Ryan. Let me tell you something. When you have grandchildren, don't tell them stories. You know why? Because they're gonna look at you in a very different light. And they're like, "Wow, Grandpa's kind of a loser, isn't he?" Grandpa was kind of weird. I think they'll be able. God, imagine me at seventy. I wonder what I'm gonna be like. This tall oracle <laughs> with a long ass beard. Oh, that'd be cool to see. Jacob chimed in. Jacob. He chimed in via um, the Spreaker Hoppy Radio app. Yo, this horse will win the Florida Derby. Cool. Next. Uh, he knew who I was talking about. The Arthur kid. <laughs> 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 and then. um. <laughs> He says, Jimmy Kimmel sucks Donkey D. Salute to Hoppy. Okay, no, no, no. He doesn't suck. He was great on the man show. He was great the first 10 years, but now the bashing of uh, Trump all the time is annoying. I do want to say this, though. Have you ever listened to Don Imus' show? Uh, no, never. So, Other than the nappy-headed. <laughs> that's what I want to talk about. Okay. Thing that he said, not right. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. All right. So, Don Imus is retiring tomorrow after doing radio for 50 years, more than twice than I've been alive. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. I know when Don Imus said that comment about the university back in 2007 and he got fired from WFAN radio and fired from MSNBC when he said the nappy-headed comment. I feel like that kind of ruined his reputation a little bit because whenever I've been reading comments about him retiring, like you didn't even know he was retiring until I told you. No. Like no one's talking about it. I didn't even know who he was. Really? I mean, I knew. The, the yeah, the, the thing is like he kind of hurt his reputation a little bit by doing that. But what's been annoying about the media is the fact that everybody talks about that as if that's the only thing he did in radio. So if that happened 11 years ago, he then would have been in radio for 39 years. So he had almost four decades prior of doing radio, and he being the original like talk show host in New York City, the original Howard. And even if he did copy Howard a little bit, I just feel like radio isn't sending him enough of a send-off. Because, like... I feel like we get so wrapped up in our own egos, especially hosts that are on air, that they never want to give credit to where credit's due. And I just feel like radio needs to give Don Imus more credit because he's been doing it for a half a century. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not too familiar with his work. That's, that's the thing. But that's usually the, that's usually the thing that what happens with uh, someone. Like, okay, like uh, look at Louis C.K., for example. Like yeah. one – like like a few, I don't know I wouldn't I don't know if it's one but honestly just like a, you know his name has been kind of tarnished after all this stuff and now which is kind of weird like before maybe a year ago two years ago everyone was talking Louis C.K. is probably one of the best comedians I think he's one time. of the best comedians now jerking off or not well now definitely but like of all time but imagine like. After this. Of all time, too. I think he's yeah. phenomenal. So imagine, like, you know, after the, like, how much work, like, how much, like, his work is definitely going to be diminished. I mean, unless he, there's, he pulls a turn around. Uh, what if in, like, 10, maybe 20 years, uh, when he retire, if, he's, if he retires, uh, do you think everyone's going to, like, think the same thing as they do of Don Imus? Don Imus, I think his issue 
is he's so old that he's been doing it for like 50 years that I feel like a lot of his listeners aren't on social media. And I just feel like his nappy headed comment almost said it, Jesus. I feel like it being passed down. That's what our generation knows him as. And because we're such uptight pussies that get offended by words, if you see the headline, you're like, oh, the nappy-headed guy. He wasn't that good at radio. Well, that's the thing. Not well, knowing that the, he was in New York City for 50 years. Well, that's the thing. The next generation is going to think that Louis C.K. was nothing but just a pervert. A, yeah. A, a, a rapist Dude, is what some people say. Louis, to me, I know you can talk about Curb Your Enthusiasm as being kind of that influential... Show without the it's, laugh track. It's not but, that great. I, I'm not a big. Fan. I mean, I I, I, love, I enjoy it, but like I, you didn't I love like Louis. I love Louis. But, no, I was saying Curb Your Enthusiasm no, no, no. wasn't as great, but Louis, I love. Curb's brilliant. But listen, we're not gonna agree with that point, so I'm not gonna do a sidetrack argument of us arguing about Curb. Here is my point, though. To me, Curb was kind of the first show. Larry Sanders in the '90s, but that was kind of not ready for its time. If that came out now, it'd be loved. But what I'm saying is. Curb was kind of the first show without a laugh track, probably because it was done by the guy that helped make uh, Seinfeld, Larry David. It was kind of the mm. first show without a laugh track that everybody loved. And then there were a few shows that came out in the early 2000s. They were like, eh. But to me, Louis coming out in like 2009, 2010, that and it's – Always Sunny are kind of like the shows that you can thank for the league. You can thank for uh, Eastbound and Down. You can thank yeah. for um, better things. You can thank for Atlanta. Any of the you can thank for Modern Family. Any of those shows that are kind of dry. It all goes back to Louis, and nobody wants to admit it because Louis is a weird guy. What about The Office? The Office, too, to a point. But I'm talking yeah. about cable. FX wasn't really doing comedies until It's Always Sunny. Now yeah. all they do is comedies. Um, People are just in denial that he's really influential. Because what I loved is a year ago, if you would have said that Louis C.K. was overrated, everybody would have told you to shut up. But I love how mm-hmm. now everyone's like, yeah, 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 he's overrated. Yeah, I guess you have a yeah, point. Yeah, 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 he's not very good. I'm going to agree with you on that because I have no original opinion. Yeah, that's the thing. You can have any opinion you want on Louis. No matter, like, it's fine. But, like, I... It, what bugs me the most is the people who would change their thought, their thought about him, about his him doing his craft, as if his yeah, like the thing that he did was uh, was any like was related to his comedy. You know, right. Randy Chavez, who does the movie reviews for millennials on the Woody Show, and he's the video producer, or he works on the video part of the Woody Show out in Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. the nationally syndicated Woody Show. He chimed in on Hoppy TV. He said Louis C.K.'s reputation was ruined in one day. Very, not even a day. It was ruined in, like, let's say six hours. And once Twitter got a hold of it, Bye bye. Well, what's crazy was is that people didn't even read the whole article. They would just see the they would see the headline, yeah, yeah. and then they, all of a sudden they'd label him as a, a rapist, which I, I think is unfair. A pervert, yeah. What about Aziz Ansari? Is he going to come back? Yeah. Are you kidding me? That, that that whole thing, what happened with him, was just complete just, and utter bullshit. It was just awkward. It literally felt like an episode of his show. Uh, Master of no- I love that show, by the way. Master. I haven't of seen season two. Season one, when he takes that girl to the concert and she takes the jacket. Yeah. Or when he was trying out for the movie via Skype in the coffee shop. It's <laughs> yeah. a funny TV. Um, no, he, that's just you know. And it, did you, you do you know you know the story right? With, with Aziz. What is it for people that haven't heard it? Because I didn't really read the article because it pissed me off. Before you get mm-hmm. to that, Randy from the Woody Show chimed in and said that our generation will ruin someone's legacy in a blink of an eye. That he's com- Very completely true. correct. So what happened with, because I know what happened, but for people that didn't know, what happened allegedly probably with Aziz and Sari? So what happened was, and, and, and this isn't even allegedly anymore because the, she confirmed it. So the girl got on this site. Uh, the site, I b- do believe it was called Jezebel. You can fact check me on, la- on later. On me. You can fact check me later. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just spazzed out. So she went online and said that she went on a date with Aziz Ansari. And then throughout the date, she was having a, she was having a good time. Everything was going cool. Uh, Aziz invited her back to his apartment. And Aziz kind of, you know, he was saying, hey, should I, do you want to get some drinks? And she's like, sure. So they're both uh, drinking. And immediately... He 
they started making out and it was going fine and she was liking it. And then she said she got uncomfortable all of a sudden. And then she said, you know what? I don't want to do this. And Aziz said, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, we could just chill on the couch. We'll just uh, cuddle or something and we could just watch some TV or something. And she said, okay, cool. And nothing else really happened. And then I think there was something that happened where she and she either she or he initiated again. Mm -hmm. And she was and I think one of them, I think Aziz was like, is this OK? And she said, yes. But then um, midway through it, I think Aziz was naked and uh, she was like, you know what? Never mind. Like, like this is like I, I don't feel she said she felt uncomfortable. Um, I bet he does not look good naked. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, it just it, So then her thing was is that she felt uncomfortable and she felt that Aziz was – I don't know. I think it was something along the lines Aziz was using his power. But the thing was was that it was just a, like two couples on a date and he did ask for consent. And whenever she would tell him no, he backed off. And it was even to the point where she was getting – like when, like the last time he was getting naked and uh, she was like, hey, do you want to – she's like, I don't know mm -hmm. about this. And then he's like, okay, well, I think I should just put my clothes on right now and we should just stop and just chill or something. And that's really, that's all it is. Dude, he got crushed too. You would have thought he was like Harvey Weinstein with the accusations that got thrown at him. Everyone's like yelling at him. Um, and the crazy thing is, uh, are you familiar with the Young Turks? It's okay. It's a very left liberal. Yes, 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 it's, it's yes. a le left-leaning liberal uh, website. Even though, even though they were like, "That's not fair. That's not at all fair." What happened with Aziz and Sorry? And honestly, yeah, like it, it sucks because all it takes is a headline that some journalist wants to re that wants to you know get views on because the newspaper industry is dying, and so they're like, "Okay, let me just put that right there," and. Everyone's assuming that Aziz and Sorry is a pedophile or a person that's abusing his power, and he didn't. And the actual article on that site, Jezebel, uh, explained it. Like even, even the even the girl made a lot of points in her uh, in her writing that just basically were kind of hypocritical. Jezebel was that site that isn't fake news, but like, no, it, it was the website Babe dot net. It wasn't Jezebel. It was Babe dot net. Oh, okay, but. I will say this about Jezebel. They're the type of website that when Anthony Cumia, no, when Opie got fired from the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. No, when Opie, let me reset that. Okay. So Opie did the Opie and Anthony show with Anthony Cumia for 20 years, and then Anthony got fired for his tweets four years ago. So then it was the Opie and Jim show, and then Opie and Jim broke up. So Opie did the afternoon show, and Jim and Sam Roberts, who were on the Opie and Anthony show, just did the morning show, and Opie did the afternoon show. Opie got let go in June last year, and Jezebel did an article where they were like, the last remaining part of Opie and Anthony is gone from Sirius XM. It's like, not really, because Jim Norton and Sam Roberts are there. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it's not fake news, but those blogs, they often have like a very much of like a plot line they're trying to sell, and they'll exaggerate things because yeah. they know that they can get away with it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's you know that's completely right, and um, I mean that's not what we do here. No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even read half of our news clips. Yeah, I just yeah. throw it at you. I'm like, read this article about Carson Daly now. Like it's like midnight, and you're making me read. Hell no. Okay, you didn't have to come. I'm just was... kidding. I'm just, whoa. whoa. Oh. Don't just feel bad. Okay, don't get defensive. I'm just making a joke, all right? That's it. That's I it. really am a pussy. I get offended by everything. What's Like, I'm the type of guy that, like... What's wrong, dude? I don't know, man. I'm just... Well, <laughs> the... Here's the thing is like I'm very open and honest on my show. I like to keep it real. I like to say it as it is. But oftentimes you want to kind of keep things in your personal life on the side. So it's one of those things where eh, if you're friends with me, maybe I'll tell you. Maybe I'll let you know. But it's like, you know what? You got to keep. Let's just say that I've had a lot of anxiety lately. I've been really anxious. And you know what sucks about being anxious, too? 
is the fact that, like, I just want to turn it off. Whenever I get anxious, I'm like, can I just take a magic pill to relax me? And doing this show does relax me from being anxious. But, like, do you ever – because when I'm anxious, you can openly read it on my face. And then my speech impediment comes out, blah, blah, blah. Well, you, are you ever anxious while, like, working an event or just anything and you're able to hide it? Or are you a pretty happy guy? Because I can't figure it out with you. I mean, that's for you to find out. I don't know. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, nah, it, it's, it's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, I guess, like, I guess I'll come so. into the office and Michael, our boss, will be like, what's up, Hoppy? And I'm like, oh, I'm doing okay. And you can tell I, that I'm, it's my time of the month. I, I do get anxious. Yeah. But it's and – I, and I feel like, yeah, I do kind of conceal it well. But it's not really so much on – kind of trivia it's more along the lines of i just in my mind i'm like i hope people i hope i, I hope i say the right things or I i'm hope, the same way i hope i i hope i uh don't upset anyone and like and outside i'm like i feel like i try to be cool and like collective and whatever but inside i'm kind of freaking out but that's like you know once that's kind of uh that's not like every day you know mm-hmm. I, I have you know i just have you know sometimes everyone's anxious a little bit you know like like in terms of uh People who, people who are like everyone, like even if you're like healthy, not healthy, you get anxious sometimes. That's just part. Well, of here's it. what's weird about when I get anxious is, let's say I go to Wawa, I get nervous about talking to somebody just because they'll ask me how tall I am. But once I get to the car, I feel comfortable. That's what's weird about my anxiousness is like it'll turn off real quick, but then something will happen and I just overly think it. Yeah, no, and. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really the person you should be talking about with mental health, but. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, because I'm not really, um, I think I've only, I've had one panic attack in my life once, and. What do you think the definition of one is? I was just, just the point where you're suffoc like, 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 almost literally and figuratively, you're suffocating. That's how I felt. That's how I remember it just like. I, it says here on Google, a sudden feeling of acute and disabling anxiety. Well, if yeah. that's the truth, then I have that all the time. Well, and, and, the, and the thing was, I mean, like the way I got my panic attack, I just remember. I, and it, it was like smoking. I, I smoked weed once. I've never smoked. Go on. <laughs> and so I just thought about, I just like I, like, I was happy. I was really happy at that moment. And then all of a sudden, like all these little things that have been just weighing on my mind for like. A while have just been kind of like reappearing and i've just kind of been like thinking i'm like oh i love like i love my like i love the people around me but wait do they love me do i deserve these people? that's me like, every like, second fuck? bro and just like everything just i don't know it was a freak thing that happened with me and uh i ended up talking to people about it but uh i don't know that's the only time i've ever had a real brush with anxiety that that really affected me for for a while but other than that pretty happy i don't know now do our listeners out there have a better definition of anxiety and panic attacks? Well, you got a laptop right there. You can. Well, I was doing a transition. Will you let me finish my point? Or are you going to interrupt me? All you have to Go do on. is tweet at us at promo ride one zero two five. There, I plugged you first. Thank you. And at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and let us know what your definition is and if you suffer from them. I'm just curious. Kind of want to get an overview of it. All right. Here's the deal. We're going to come back in happy hour. You good for a little more time? You're trying to get home. No, I'm good, dude. Let's, let's go. Let's keep going. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. We have more, let's say, tone deaf music theater to premiere. This one's going to be good. If you thought the last one of On the Hall Line by Pretty Ricky was good, wait till the next one. We will be right back on happy hour after this. Do not touch that computer mouse that tablet however the hell you're listening to my show happy hour happy hour sir yes sir yes sir yes sir i got new shoes on my rod yes sir rolling down to 95 yes sir and you can see in my eyes yes sir that i'm looking for a cutie pie yes sir and we ain't gotta make love yes sir and we can just cuddle up yes sir if you want me to beat it up yes sir then damn it i'ma beat it up yes sir my body your body my body 
your body, my body, your body, my body, your body. It's time to turn Hoppy on. What up, AJ? Hey, Hoppy. You like that voiceover from Melissa? Yeah. Yes, I do. No, it was I do. so weird. No. So my uh, microphone, I'm not talking about my penis, is very long. It has like a long cord. So she was literally laying on a bed because she didn't want to get up to do the voiceover. So that's when she did it. Mm-hmm. Well, good on her. That's a, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a great woman. I told her she literally could do a voiceover for like, you're tuned in to... Q102, Tulsa's best music. I just made up. Yeah. Yeah. I would be, yeah, I could definitely see her do that. She has that voice. Hi, 1015, all the hits. Or, or she has those Favorite late night, commercials. those late night comedy, comedy, uh, what was it, comedy central uh, advertisement where they talk about come color hotline, 1 800. Bone Town, <laughs> Bone Town. <laughs> like just, those, you know, and then they'll, they'll they'll have the commercial with the with the women, like just yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Those late night that you'd like, we're like, whoa, this is allowed on television. Dude, I remember that too. You know what's sad? It was like called it like in seventh grade. <laughs> Everything happens in seventh grade with you. So what did you? What what happened? What was it like? I never did. This is so sad. Do they hang so up? So basically... They're like, oh, shit. <laughs> it was like, hey, this is Pound Town. We'd love to hear from you. But first, we need your credit card info. I don't have a credit card. <laughs> so what I would do is call the number, hang up, and then refresh it. And until I hit the climax, I would just... Keep calling. So you just listen to her voice <laughs> for the nine seconds. Hang up. You, call. <laughs> you got off on a girl's voice, just their voice alone. Dude, this is two thousand. It wasn't even. This no, is two thousand and seven. But it wasn't even listening to like a story or anything. It was literally just. Yeah. <laughs> there's something, dude. There's something in your brain. There's something there's something that hasn't been found within the, the, the confines of Ryan Hoppy's it's called autism. <laughs> Don't joke, dude. This could be serious. Maybe if you do have it, no one will you be laughing no. then. I have a ninety two IQ. I don't have it. I think I'm just I suffer from the case of being an only child. Wait, wait a minute. Are you wait, 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 does autism have anything to do with IQ? I mean, it could, but like I'm saying that, like, just don't Google it. Let's I'm not. gonna Google it right now. No, please don't Google I have autism. Please. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna Google. <laughs> what are you gonna Google? I'm gonna Google. Does autism affect IQ? Well, yeah, because like a 78 is when you're mentally challenged, and I have like well, a 92, 93. I'm like average. I'm like the Luke Wilson character in Idiocracy. I'm like I'm very basic. What does it say, AJ? What does WebMD or Wikipedia? say about it they say that less than a third of cho- uh, of uh, children with autism have any uh any intellectual disabilities so it's that just because you have autism doesn't mean you're dumb it, it, just, let's just not go there so yeah it's like you could be above 85 i don't have autism okay what just, else to say there no i'm just i mean that's about it it's just you don't have to be you, it's like it's like, you know, if you're handicapped, it doesn't mean you have your stupid. I remember one time at lunch, this kid um, named Brad, this douchebag that grew up in the same town as me that went to my school, um, he printed out a piece of paper of all the uh, symptoms of having autism or Asperger's, and we were at, like, Jimmy John's eating lunch, and he was like... Who hung out with you? Who were your friends? <laughs> Dude, that was every kid at Hersey High School, that awful high school. That was everybody. They treated me like dirt. Now, granted, I kind of brought it on myself, but they also really brought it to me. Like, there is that uh, character in Prison Break that ate that dead body in season four, like 10 years ago. And everyone's like, that's going to be you when you grow up. Ha ha. 
you like Prison Break, huh? It's like, yeah, it's a good show. You, I don't know. I wanted to see. I, I feel like I want to go back in time and see. Like, I want to place you at a different school. You know? I want to place me in a different. I feel like if I grew up in Florida, I feel like Florida gets my weirdness. I feel like the Midwest is too uptight and too much like, oh, everything has to be proper. Because kids were just ruthless, dude. The cheerleaders, mm-hmm. um, they TP'd and egged my house. What? <laughs> That's like some movie stuff. No one, I, I never heard anyone get TP'd. And then my, di- oh, it happened to me three times. They left a voicemail back because I had a home phone. What was it? Oh, uh, this is Richard from Pornhub.com. Um, your son's video collection is overdue. He hasn't returned, which it didn't make any sense because you don't really return Pornhub. Or I think it was the local video shop this is like 10 years ago family video the video two whores get dp'd with nine guys around them is overdue and your bill is 69 dollars <laughs> they would hang up <laughs> well ryan <laughs> what did you buy the other day and it was so awkward because we had to have voicemail where it would be like beep next message fuck you hoppy Beep! What the hell? And this was because we were on vacation in North Carolina visiting my uncle. So it was one of those things where... The hobbies uh, are on vacation. Let's prank call them. So uh, No one had anything else, better else to do. It's the Midwest, I know, but still. And the sad part is that's Chicago. That's where things are happening in the Midwest. So that's... Imagine living in any other town like Iowa City or Milwaukee. The other thing was, too, it got so bad that we had to unhook the phone at night so nobody would be able to call. What the... <laughs> Arlington Heights, that's Illinois. That's terrible. <laughs> Hoppy, that's... Oh. Now do you see why when I get picked on air, it's like flashbacks? Because I know, like, when... The bone makes fun of me. It's not like that, but it just feels at times like that. That's why I get so defensive. It's because I'm like a broken down puppy that just got made fun of every day. That grew up in an alley on the corner. Like I'm like that puppy dog that nobody gave attention to. That just kind of roamed the blocks of New York City and barely made it by. Yeah. You know, I'm just a broken down puppy dog. I'm not as cute as one, but. I feel like this became a therapy session. I feel I like happy hour. Listen, I'm 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 absorbing a lot today. <laughs> I'm absorbing a lot, and I'm learning a lot about your childhood. And I, I think everybody is, dude. I feel like I, I kind of suppress the memories because, like, I can't let it affect me. But I feel like I'm in denial about how it affected me. I think one day it's just going to be a show that's like a bunch of your friends just sitting down and talking. Well, and you know what's weird? Circle, yeah. And then you're going to end up like laughing about it in the beginning, but at the end you're just going to be crying, and then we're all going to hug you. Well, you know what they said now? You know what they said then, rather? They, they couldn't well, say now. Like in 2008, you're going to shoot out to school, which you totally couldn't say now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Knowing, listening to you talk about your child, like your childhood, I don't know how you did it. I mean, I mean, obviously, I know how you radio, did it. That's like literally yeah. radio and jerking off. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. That that air was warranted. <laughs> that literally was deserving when I said, "Yeah, radio and jerking off, dude." The saddest thing happened like two days ago. No, it wasn't me jerking off. I'm trying to think of a transition so it doesn't seem so creepy. Because that's what I'm trying to work on. I was talking to my boy S. Dot, who helps out our promotions team immensely, did radio up in Utica. He's like a legend up in Utica, New York. We're very glad to have Sean Morelli, or Morel, whatever it is, a part of the Bowen promotions team. He's the man. And he told me I need to work on transition. So this moment of me explaining it, is so I don't go from talking about jerking off to talking about the phone call I had with my 14-year-old cousin. <laughs> so this way... Wait, wait. <laughs> okay, so it was my 14-year-old cousin's birthday, which, first of all, I'm sad I'm not able to hang out with him because he's all the way up in Chicago and I'm down here. But isn't it weird to think that a 14-year-old was born in 2004? Mm, it's 2018. No. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, I know, I know f- what you mean. Yeah, no, I, I remember, I, I was, uh, w- like my cousin, my cousin, the other, like I just realized, like, wait, what, what year were you born in? He's like, 
2009. What? Like, like that's just 2009. I remember 2009 very clearly. I was talking to him on the phone. Did you? Okay. So you're four years younger than me. But I want to ask you this. When I was in ninth to twelfth grade, eighth grade too, ten years ago, when I began high school, Jesus, I feel old saying that. It gives me chills down my face. What I'm saying is, like February of ten years ago, there was the Northern Illinois University shooting, NIU. And then in two thousand and seven was the Virginia Tech shooting. And there were shootings here and there. But I feel like when you were a freshman, that's when the uh, shooting happened at that uh, school, the uh, elementary school, and then the Batman shooting. I feel like your graduation class, graduation of 2016, I feel like you guys, did you have more fear about shooters at all? Or not really? Uh, you see, the, the school I went to, we were like a pretty small school. Well, no, no, you, we kind of... There was partic- in particularly like in particular two kids who uh, went to our school that you know we had made fun of, like like as a community kind of like joked about that like that person might be a school shooter one day and uh, which is t- which is terrible but I mean I don't know what to tell you I mean we were we, we didn't really understand Dude, at the time guess what talking to my little cousin on the phone yeah. That generation, I don't know if it's Generation Z or whatever. I don't know if they have a new generation name we haven't come up with yet. So the kids that are, he's going to be in ninth grade next year. I can't believe it. So the kids that are born in 2004, 2003, 2002 that are in school right now. Man, my cat's about to knock over the happy TV setup. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at him go. Look at All her right. go. Let me, yeah. hold, let me hold the cat. Let me hold the cat. All right. Yeah. Hold Lily. Let's yeah. see if she likes you. Yeah. Dude, yeah. they live in fear about shootings every day. T says that they'll write down which kid is going to be the next shooter. What, wait, so where would they write it down? On a piece of paper, and then they like... He says he doesn't do it, but kids in class are like, oh, Jimmy's going to be the next shooter. And he told me that this kid in his class supposedly said... Said he was going to shoot up the class. But the issue was this. Supposedly he didn't say it, but another kid thought he said it, so they just suspended Jimmy for two days just to be safe. Like that's the scrutiny and nervousness that they're under now. Is they're just I can't imagine being a teacher or going to school now. It's gotta be frightening. Um, yeah, no, and I it's it it sucks because like the not only the like this stems this has to stem debate, but the fact that like no, nobody's doing anything right now about it. Other than you'll see some Facebook videos about like some schools putting in like this like ten thousand dollar security system. With these... Oh my god! Don't knock over the Happy TV setup, Lily. Uh, my cat just did. But you know almost. what I mean. You see a lot of these yeah. things, but like you know, one side is arguing arguing so bad for you know their guns. The other side is arguing so bad for like the removal of guns, and it's just you know it's it's not really. I don't know. I guess we have to have these arguments, but these it's getting to the point where it's not really effective anymore. Two things. You know what really annoys me? And I'm not trying to talk about gun control. I actually, basically, I didn't want to talk about that whore that banged Trump that used to be in porn. And I've watched her videos. She wasn't that good. I'm not talking about her because my opinions. i done a lot of research on her. Mm-hmm. My opinions would be the same as 50% of this place, which I think she did it. I think she's doing it for attention. I do think there's something on that CD-ROM that Trump's freaking out about. But what I'm saying is I purposely did not talk about Trump on a show. I try not to. But here's what I'm going to say. When it comes to guns, what I hate more than anything on social media, and it seems like it comes, and this is going to offend people, but it's just my opinion. It seems like the average gun-toting religious guy who watches NASCAR on the weekend and lobs boobs, and is a truck driver, and goes to those nudie bars on the side of the road. You see next exit when you're driving in the middle of Georgia. Yeah. It seems like those type of guys are the ones that write these mean comments because that's the, like, fan base of talk radio. And I've unfriended so many listeners, I don't even know, because they'll call the kids that are doing those protests about the shootings pussies. And I'm like, where do you come off with criticizing these kids that probably yeah. will have PTSD for the rest of their life mm-hmm. because their school got shot up. 
Yeah, they're they're, they're expressing. Say what you want about their you know, opinions; they may be a little bit off. But like, where do you come off with coming and, them, and, calling and, them and, pussies? And yeah, they're expressing opinions that are unpopular, and they're you know that's yeah they're huge pussies. That's so cowardly of them to express their opinions. At least protest. they have the guts to exactly. say what they feel in front of a yeah. whole crowd, and like those losers talking behind a keyboard. Other thing, which 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 sucks because the people are trying to like tell them like, oh, the way you're feeling about guns is wrong, or the way you feel about that situation is wrong. Like they were they were fucking there. Yeah. They were they, they were like they Their were, opinions may be wrong. They may be over the top. They're, they're also are, fucking 17 years old and they fucking heard gunshots and people they were either friends with or were acquaintances with or saw in the hallway are now dead because a fucking kid that they saw all the time that everybody knew was going to shoot up that school fucking shot up that school. Sorry. Yeah. And also like the fact that it's like maybe maybe not, they don't have the right opinion, but it's not like their their opinions aren't worth hearing about. Give them a chance. Yeah, Let them have an opinion. Holy shit! Really and I don't like bringing it up on the show because it just sparks outrage. But I just had to get that out there. It's just weird hearing from my little cousin and Jacob, my good friend, who's a Trump supporter. Uh, he commented, "Um, okay." He wrote. A comment. He wrote, Chicks who have been raped carry guns. Wow. Interesting. Uh, he also wrote, Whoa. I did a lot of research. Wow. Here comes Hoppy's take on who owns guns. Okay. That's why I appreciate Jacob listening. But that comments like that is why I don't like talking about guns I mean- or the T word or that whore that did videos. Well, we're not talking about, you know. But what I'm saying is guns. any like, of know, these yeah. topics, it just brings out dumb comments. Yeah, I know, but, nobody, but here's everybody the thing, thinks they're. No, the, the thing is. Here's the thing they should know that we're not talking about the like the gun conversation. We're just talking about these kids. You know, just because their opinions don't match up with yours doesn't mean that their their opinions aren't worth anything. The only you thing I, mean, I will say, the only thing I will say about these shit. kids, and I'm not trashing them, I promise. The only thing I will say is it seems like they're getting a little bit of, like, fame. Like, they're verified on Twitter and their household names. Like, that one kid that everyone thought was a crisis actor. And some of them do kind of have punchable faces. Like, they kind of have that arrogance where – and I would, too, if I've been through what I've been through. But what I'm saying is – they're not very humble. That's the only thing I will say about those kids, especially that one kid, David uh-huh. or whatever. I don't even know. His, you know what I'm talking about. The one kid that everyone said was a crisis actor. He comes off very hateable. And it, it's not his fault. I'm sure he's angry. I bet he has friends that died. I'm just saying that's no, I, the I, only I reason why I think they might come off not likable is they're just – they're young kids. We all thought our opinions were the right ones when we were teenagers. Hell, we think that when we're in our 20s, just think about a teenager thinking their opinion is right. I'm just saying, like, it doesn't mix well. Well, they're trying to come off as... Uh, they're trying to come off Advocates. as... Advocates. Yeah, that, and, like, they're trying to come off as strong and to the point and blunt and just very... Oh. Uh, you know, not, they're not trying to be obnoxious, although that's what some people uh, think they are. But at the same time, like, they got to know... I don't know. It's it's really it's really weird. What's what's going on? This is why I don't like talking about Trump or guns or anything. This guy who listens to my show all the time and I'm friends with Jacob from Arlington Heights, Illinois. He comments: the issue is some of the kids want to repeal the Second Amendment. Listen, maybe their opinion. On the Second Amendment, maybe their opinion on gun control, maybe their opinion on something isn't what you agree with. But what makes your opinion, and I'm not just saying this towards Jacob, who's listening. I don't want him to think I'm trashing him. But this is what I'm sick and tired of anybody that's for guns is doing. And I'll say this about people on the left that aren't willing to work with people on the right. Everybody thinks that their opinion is correct and nobody is willing to work with anybody else. Mm-hmm. And everybody else is like, my opinion's right. Screw that. Everybody shares memes that are inaccurate. And then everybody, when they feel like they're losing an argument, if they're on the left, they're like, oh, well, Trump grabs people by the pussy. And then people on the right are like, oh, Killer Clinton. Like, 
nobody is able to have a discussion where they go, Mm -hmm. I will agree to disagree, AJ. Every time somebody on Facebook or anywhere disagrees with politics, you immediately go, well, they're wrong because of this. Nobody is right. Nobody is wrong in politics. It's your own original opinion. I mean, that's what I'm and I don't want to go down the road of that hack Alex Jones or any of those douchebags in Fox News. So I'll quickly change the subject. What's your last point? Real quick, like and someone was talking about, Okay, I'm I okay, I'm not that comfortable with guns, but I do believe in the Second Amendment. But here's the thing, though, if people you shouldn't vilify people who feel like especially people who feel like they want to make this country who are doing this for the betterment of the country you shouldn't vilify people just because they decide that a certain amendment wants to be repealed here's the thing about amendments the amendments they can be they can be repealed there's that's why we have amendments amendments are changes to the constitution it's completely legal i know you know like you're looking at your guns or like whoever has guns and you're you're scared for them that's that's totally fine and, and you have your if you want to fight back fight back using your words but when you fight back using your words don't attack them don't be like don't don't call them stupid kids don't like they, they, these kids aren't these kids aren't stupid they, these kids are like look are looking at it from a different point of view that you have never been able to look at so you can't just completely write them out just because they have a different opinion than you you do it, it's just it, it, i don't know it, it's just like that's that's it rubs me the wrong way that's the big that's the thing that i i don't like and, and even with like with seeing my dad like with even my dad do this is that he would he would see these kids and then he, like or no not my dad but like some like someone would see these kids and then they would try to be all defensive and like all oh, those kids don't know shit oh like oh my goodness like i don't know i i think it's just it's really stupid and i and honestly i don't think that you should be uh just claiming you, you shouldn't think that these kids are, are doing anything bad. Honestly, these kids are trying to are trying to make a change that they listen, feel listen. is good for the country. That they feel, not necessarily you or I, or maybe your friend, but that's what they feel. Listen, and we got to applaud them that they're listen, actually start listen, that. Listen, they're doing what listen. they believe in. We're gonna come back and move on from this topic. We have one final news segment because it's going on one a.m. when we're recording here, and this next news segment. Will cheer up the mood. It will make everyone happy. Anybody that grew up watching Disney, they will love this next news article. So we will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Tweet at AJ at promo red one oh two five and like Jacob, which we do appreciate your opinion. We don't want to think that we're yeah. bashing you. It's just we disagree with it. Chat us like he is on the Hoppy Radio app. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour and we will wrap this up after the computer mouse, that tablet, however the hell Happy Hour. Happy Hour. From Chicago to Cleveland to Tampa Bay, you are plugged into Happy Hour. Welcome back to Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. AJ, did you hear the news? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Uh, do you guys, are you guys uh, fans of Toy Story or Randy Newman? Well, I got the perfect thing for you. Let's just play this a real second. I got a friend in you, AJ. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, yeah. You're quite my friend in times of need. I rant about things. I got a friend in AJ. Yeah, I got a friend in AJ. Sound just like all right. That's that's your old voice. But anyways, so everyone knows the highly po- the very popular movie Toy Story uh, by Pixar, and you do remember a scene where uh, they enter uh, where Andy takes his toys to a very popular pizza place called Pizza Planet. Yeah, Pizza Planet. Well, yeah. 
It looks really awesome from the movies, but I always wanted to go. Right? I was well, always like, Ma, well, take Hoppy, me to Pizza Planet. It's not too late for you to go because uh, Disney had just announced that in Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland, uh, Disney will put in a Pizza Planet, which is a pizza arcade area that's going to try to replicate uh, Toy Story's Pizza Planet. It is officially named. Aliens Pizza Planet, a better place. The new restaurant will replace a place called Red Rockets Pizza Port. Who cares about that? Red Rockets. Scheduled to open on April 13th. I love a Red Rocket. I don't even know what that means. Just in time for Pixar oh, Fest. Yeah, you, you don't know, you don't, you never seen your dog's penis? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Red Rocket. You never heard red, of that? You never thought it was a Red Rover. Right, yeah, it's true. But. Disney is planning on turning an outdated pizza restaurant at one of its theme parks into a real-life version of Toy Story's Pizza Planet. Fans at a 1995 movie 23 years ago will recognize Pizza Planet as the space-themed arcade restaurant when Buzz Lightyear and Woody met the aliens, a.k.a. little green men who worship the claw machine. In the movie scene, both Buzz and Woody, who has a good radio show out in Los Angeles, are chosen by the claw, but instead... End up in the hands of the evil kid in the neighborhood, Sid. Not Sid Rosenberg, who I interviewed two days ago on Happy Hour and made the national press and allaccess.com. Let me just brag about it. Okay. No. Yeah. Listen, AJ. That'll be great, dude. I can't wait. I got some sad news. Sad? Okay. Well, first of all, it's going on 1 a.m. You live an hour away, so you're going to have a fun drive. Yeah, no. That's, what do you have going on tomorrow? News. I have the Lazy Ass Podcast. Where can people to do find it? You can find us on Twitter at those lazy asses or on Facebook, the Lazy Ass Podcast. And you can follow me at promo red one oh two five on Twitter. And for any updates on the show, we will be doing our our podcast our podcast mm-hmm. will be released tomorrow at ten PM. All right. Hoppy Radio on Snapchat at Ryan Hoppy on Instagram, Twitter, RyanHoppyRadio.com, RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. Go to Malektronic, M-A-L-E-K, Tronic.com. Buy the best electronics around. If you use the keyword Hoppy at checkout, you can save 20%. Go to tinyurl.com slash Hoppy Hour Decal. It's tinyurl.com slash happy hour decal. For just two bucks, you can support small business at Soli's Graphics out of Duluth, Minnesota. Duluth? Mm hmm. And you can get happy hour decals. Also, go to tinyurl.com slash happy t shirts. It's tinyurl.com slash happy t shirt. Brought to you by Tampa Bay Vans. You can get happy hour t shirts. And some of the funds go to the Lymphoma and Leukemia Society. Get the Hoppy Radio app in the Google Play and iOS shop. And that's about it. All right. Thank you to everybody that listened to this late night edition of Hoppy Hour. You guys are We great. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We'll probably be back next week. I'm trying to get a second job, trying to figure out what I'm going to do about money. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably have AJ back. You want to come back? I'll think about it. Oh, okay. I talked to Pugs, who's from the Lazy Ass Podcast. He doesn't mind you coming on here because it's like I'm plugging the Lazy Ass Podcast. I'll think about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Just let me let me think about it. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And I signing am signing off. And I'm your fat guy, Red, signing off. Bye, cutie. Bye. Happy Hour. Happy Hour.